Our next award is named after Brownie Mary, Mary Jane Rathbun. Uh, she died in 1999, but she will never be forgotten. She was an American medical cannabis activist and a volunteer at the hospital in San Francisco General. She became known for illegally baking and distributing chocolate cannabis brownies to AIDS patients. She was arrested on three occasions, with each arrest bringing increased local, national, and international media attention to the medical cannabis movement. Her grandmotherly appearance generated public sympathy for her cause and undermined attempts by the district attorney's office to prosecute her for possession. Her arrest generated interest in the medical community and motivated researchers to propo propose one of the first clinical trials to study the effects of cannabinoids in HIV-infected adults. This award, I am glad and thankful to present to Sherry Sicard, who publishing or, as it were, be circus performers and do a lot of amazing things in her life. Um, she has also decided to be very generous and support Joe Grumbine and other patients and providers showing up to court every day as court support, donating her products and her expertise for free to many people and causes and auctions. Not only that, her food is delicious. <laughs> And easy to follow recipes, I really appreciate that because I need the help. I'm really glad to give you this award because Mary Jane Rathbun is a pioneer with a big heart. And for you to teach people how to infuse what they put into their own bodies, the cannabis recipes are so very important. It's not just for a hobby. It's not just about the culinary arts. It's about people being healthy, people healing, and you have supported so many people medicinally and in court. And I just want to say congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warren. Thank you for giving me a chance to talk about food again because lately it's all been politics and issues and campaigns and boycotts. And I get to talk about food again. For those of you who don't know me, I was a food and recipe writer before cannabis entered my life, but food has always had two aspects. There's always that loving, caring, nurturing aspect, but it's also been political. It's always been political for me. There's organics and additives and GMOs and so many political issues. But both aspects of food, the nurturing and the political, get exaggerated any time you add cannabis to the mix. <laughs> it's like a magic trick. You can turn a cupcake into a hot potato in an instant, just add cannabis, right? <laughs> but um, it's true. It's, it's still a loving, nurturing thing, but not only are you giving somebody something that's delicious, but you can see a patient and you can see their pain go away, their anxiety, their spasticity. That's priceless. So... We love you, Sherry. Thanks. That's amazing. But I wasn't going to cry. Uh, even better, though, is to teach that patient how to take care, control of it themselves, how to make the edibles that they need that fits their specific needs, the strains they need, the strength they need. So that, for me, is incredibly rewarding. So thank you for letting me talk about food again before I get back to talking about politics and going back to our voter education guide that we're doing in LA County. My mentors, who are, include Eleni Swerdlo, who started the first cannabis club in the Democratic Party, the Brownie Mary Cannabis Club. So you want to check that out in the member area. Eleni <laughs> is responsible largely for me being an activist in my early days. The rest of my mentors have been amazing women. Um, Kendra, Sabrina, Diane, and the Women's Alliance. Amazing women in LA. I went from the typical closeted smoker and then I learned the truth and here I am and I won't look back. And thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.